All good questions. So, um, I hate these tables. I hate these tables. I hate these tables. <laughs> I can't open these doors unless I almost pull it off here. So, what I'm trying to show you over here is the, the can you see what uh, if you look this way you see what I'm pointing at back here oh, yeah. okay this is a the force coil oh, okay. and it's just like a speaker technology you have a permanent magnet and a yeah. movable coil uh -huh. yeah. and the more current you give that coil the yeah. more it displaces from yeah. the magnet which means the more force it applies. Hmm. That's how force is applied on these machines. Hmm. That's good to know. Over here, on this side, come around this side, this is where the drive mechanism is. And so, as I rotate this cam, drives the head up and down. Mm -hmm. So it drives the head forward, which changes the rod in this LVDT. And this, this is a linear variable differential transformer. So as the core moves in and out of this um, transformer, it changes the output voltage and tells the machine where it's at. So this is your feedback hmm. loop. So, servo motor and feedback loop for positioning. Is it the same thing on the other side? Because the, there's something on the back of the, uh, this rod that looks very similar. Yeah, that's actually something called an air dash pot. And that's nothing more than a parachute type feature. So, the bond head, this is not a direct drive system, it's an indirect drive. So, the cam moves forward, moves the cam arm forward, and allows the head to fall. So the head is not being driven by the motor, it's just being allowed to fall by the motor. And it only falls as fast as that air dash pot will allow it. So it's, like so it's a shock absorber, a parachute, a soft touch feature. Oh, I see it. It's what distinguished the, this machine when it first came out is that the air dash pot uh, allowed us to bond stuff that was much more delicate than we ever had before because it had the ability. The old machines, they would drive down with bond force from reset. So it would hit like a jackhammer. These, you could drive as fast as you wanted. It would just set down and now it con makes contact, the contacts open, and says, okay, now you can apply the force. It applies the force, turns on the ultrasonics, and makes the bomb. So that's how that's done. Hmm. So up here is where our wire comes in. So this is the business end, we never touch any, we never touch the wire or any area that the wire touches. So we don't ever touch this, we don't ever touch that, we never touch this glass plate or anything down here. Because our finger oils are our worst enemy. Um, so the wire comes off the spool, goes through a glass feed tube, goes underneath this glass plate. This glass plate is what holds the wire at ground potential. Because when you're using the business end of the EFO, you want the wire to be at ground potential. So that's all that glass plate does right there, is it just holds the wire down against that chrome plate at ground potential. Then it goes through this uh, kicker. And what the kicker does is it just Pulls a little bit of wire out each time it makes a wire bond. Pulls it off the spool so it doesn't get tight down here. 
Then it goes through a tensioner. And this wire tensioner is, all its job is to do is to stay closed while the head goes down to first bond to help seat that wire up into the capillary. So the wire is hanging down a little bit. It's going to be seated up into that socket. So no matter how hot, low that ball is hanging, that tensioner will pull that wire up into that capillary. Then it goes through the wire clamps, which is the business end. Its main job is to break the second bond after it's risen up to the tail length. Okay, so it closes on the wire just enough to break the wire when the head continues to retract. Then you've got the EFO solenoid. Over here you also got the wire clamp solenoid. Mm. So remember we talked about the, the EFO gap and how you could make a mechanical adjustment to that? Mm -hmm. This is the locking nut and this is the adjustment knob. The UFO gap is basically the end of the capillary to the wand itself. That's right. the UFO gap. Right. So this knob is for locking it, right? Yes. And the other one for adjust how. Yes. How if high you look over on this side, you can see that the whole thing is on a slide. Yeah. And that screw just locks down the slide. Ah. Oh, So here, just like you had over there, you've got two buttons. This is your bond button, and this is a stitch button. Okay. So it's real uncommon. In fact, I only remember doing it once or twice in my 40-year career, uh, ball stitch bonding. It's much more common to uh, wedge stitch bond. You can imagine the stitching is you're just making a bunch of second bonds and then terminating. Yeah. Well, with the capillary, it's just you have to have a specially designed capillary that's got a cutout that creates like a, a stitch, mm. like a, a wedge bond. Mm. But it's not common at all. And how do you but, use the big button? So, so this is a manual Z lever, just like this is a manual Z lever. There is a. It's just that this one is not connected. Only oh, one can be okay. connected at the back, and this one is not connected. Okay. So, so I have to one use this one. Okay. I could have swore that worked at one point. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've bumped it before using this, but I didn't know what it did. So I was just like, oh, I hope it didn't mess anything up. This, <laughs> this is the only machine I've seen that's got both this button and mm -hmm. the lever. But when this first came out, a lot of people didn't like it because they they didn't feel like they had as much control with their thumb. Yeah. So it may have been that this machine was ordered and nobody liked it, so they just added oh, okay. that. Most machines either come one or the other. Mm 